Okay, I threatened to do a swinging ball o' death um, demonstration, so I am going to do a swinging ball of death uh, demonstration. Okay, so for those of you not interested, feel free to continue watching other stuff. For those of you who are interested, feel free to tune in. This is going to be on Twitch as well as here in the stream. Okay, so um, for fun, what we're going to try to do in our game now is to look at this swinging ball o' death uh, sort of thing going on here. Now, you'll notice I've, I've put a couple of things in here just to have fun with. Now, here's the original swinging ball o' death uh, fully implemented here interacting with some different things and you'll notice if I jump up it will knock me around I could even be careful I could I could ride on it uh, a little bit and that's one version and what I've created over here I have another version that um, is not connected to anything it is just connected to itself um, and I can kind of <laughs> It acts sort of funky. This is kind of cool. Ready? And it will push itself, and this will kind of... Oh, well, maybe I'll just push that a little bit down. Um, and eventually it falls off the world. And when it does collide with the end of the world, that does just trigger to, to restart the, the world. <clears throat> so it's it's kind of kind of fun and exciting to do these sort of... I, I, love, I love these sort of physics-based fun things here. So... <clears throat> Let's let's build a swinging ball o' death from scratch. So let's let's turn off some of these other ones so we don't see them. And go down here. Here's one. And the the most basic one that I created at first, I'll turn this one on. And this is just the preview version. This is a single image with a single joint here. And if we press play, you'll see it does swing and uh, goes back and forth. So we'll kind of, why don't we start with something like that? All right, we start with that and work our way up to something way cooler. All right, so I'm gonna go down into the scene here and I'm gonna move my mace character up a bit and over a bit. So now oh, let's move him out of the way of the that so he's still up there out of our way a little bit and we will put in the scene just for the heck of it some platforms and let's put because it feels like the right thing to do um, two platforms over there maybe a little bit more we'll continue the world over we'll start to design our world a little bit more some things so now Got a little more space to wander around. Oops. And some things we could do over here. Yep, fell off. Boom, we hit the coins, we die. All right. So let's work over here. And in this area right here in our scene, we're going to create a swinging ball o' death. All right. So within our Bayat free asset pack here, if we look in enemies, there is this 2x enemy, uh, and here's the new enemy updated preview. And the first thing it has is it has this mace preview, which is a all-in-one kind of preview, and it's 152 by, 20, uh, by 603, something like that. So it's, a, it's an image, and we'll just drag that into the scene somewhere. And let's put it, say, right here. And I'm going to change the order in the layer so it kind of sits towards the top. Okay. And now it's just a sprite in the scene. and doesn't do anything. It just sits there. It does nothing. But I want to make it interesting. So I'm going to add a couple of things to it. Now, I want to add a, the main thing is this hinge joint. So I'll say hinge joint 2D. The moment I do that, the moment I put a hinge joint in, it is also going to put in a rigid body 2D because it requires that there be a rigid body 2D for it here. And you'll see it 
is not set the position or anything that is not frozen. Um, if I hit play though, you will notice it doesn't drop even though it has a rigid body on there. That's because this hinge joint is active. If I turn the hinge joint off, it's going to act like any other just plain rigid body and just fall and be useless. But because we have a hinge joint on here, it is immediately sort of cool. It's holding itself in space. That hinge holds it in space, right? So let's enable that. Uh, I've just turned off the automatic configuration, but it's, it exists in space now. So let's bring our little character over here. And here's our character in the scene. We're going to jump up. Maybe we can uh, jump and try to hit that thing. And nothing happens. Why? Well, because the it also needs to interact with things. It needs, of course, to have a rigid, uh, excuse me, a uh, some type of collider on it. So add a collider. We'll add a circle collider. And the circle collider I want to have on it is not the whole thing. I just want it to be, for now, we'll just set it on the ball itself. All right. So now when our player comes along, here comes our player. If the player hits the chain, it won't do anything. But if it hits the ball, hopefully, oh, it's getting close there. All right. So now our swinging ball of death will start to swing. But you'll notice, and, and it only swings in, in reaction to me uh, hitting the circle collider here. Oops. <laughs> and it pivots around the center, which is not what I want it to do. Okay. What I want it to do is pivot around this position up here. So we'll select Mace Preview, and we'll go over here, and we'll say, ah, okay, hinge joint. Let's uh, let's change some parameters. We'll say, first off, edit joint angular limits. So we'll click on that, and we also want to say use limits. We want to use that. All right, so the first thing we want to do is move this pivot point up here. So we want the anchor and the connected anchor, in this case, to be at this position up here. All right, that's the pivot point we want to rotate around. Now, if we don't change this, it's going to be allowed to rotate 360 degrees around that. Okay, here comes our character. And the character jumps. And the character doesn't have a heck of a lot of force behind him there. So it moves a little bit, but not much. So let's change that a little bit. I'll come here. And one of the other things I'm going to do is take my character, my hero, and I'm going to have my hero start off in the scene closer to this thing. <laughs> because that's what I want. So now with my hero following the scene up here, we can already be where we want him to be. Let's see, maybe we can jump from this direction and give it a little bit more oomph. Yeah, so you can see it sort of swings now. It does the right thing. Boom. And it swings just a little bit. Okay. Uh, some of that is because it's really far from here. The mass is only one, and it's, it's far from the pivot, so it's going to be fairly stable as it is right there. It's going to take a lot to kind of force it to do anything. So that's a basic basic hinge joint. Now if I wanted to, I could go into the mace preview here, and I could even give it some sort of motor force and motor speed. Say so use motor, and we'll give it a motor speed of 10 and a force. Now what this is going to want to do, it's going to want it to basically force it to spin. And it has a certain, it's going to move, and the moment I say stop using the motor, it's going to go back to where it started. Now if I remove limits here, you'll see it swings. So I can use the motor to kind of get it going in a certain direction. Turning the motor on and off is kind of a cool thing you can do if you do have like a switch in the game, right? So I could say, ah, oh, okay, you know, if you don't have the motor enabled, it just does this. You do enable the motor, now it suddenly is going to crank it up and try to hold it in place. Now, you'll see right now this, the hinge joint also just swings all the way around because it has no angular limits. Okay, if I enable the angular limits, 
it now wants to go between 0 and 360, which means it starts here and can spin all the way around. But at this point, it's going to be the limit. This is the zero point here. All right, it's a little bit odd in that you'll see it's going to go up to here. And if I turn the motor off again, boom, it hits that point. That's the zero point. So if I wanted to swing sort of more like a pendulum, okay, what I need to do there is have limits that are positive and negative. Now this line we see in here, that's the movement, that's the current position of the joint, and we see the limits up and down there, so we can kind of adjust them. Now be careful just to tweaking them by hand. You want to make sure that uh, you wind up with a negative range, a negative to a positive here. You can wind up with the kind of odd things if you do things like, oh, let's see, you can move them around um, indiscriminately. Uh, sometimes you can get out of whack and uh, you kind of move one without moving the other and it gets really odd but for now so we'll just try to set it to be I like to do negative 30 and 30 so now when I hit play it will let's see the motors on and I stop the motor and you'll see it will go between that range so if I turn the motor on it will at most hit that limit here. See, it? here it comes, and there it hit the limit. And I turn the motor off, and it's going to go kind of basically to the limit, right? So that's a nice swinging pendulum sort of thing. So that's the basic use of the hinge joint here. And now that the uh, the scene is going on, I can come in here and uh, let's see, we'll get the player to be see if he gets hit by that. Ugh. All right, kind of bumped into it. So, not the most exciting thing. It doesn't, not the most realistic thing, I should say. And we can, let's see, maybe we can move the, move it around here. Bring it down. And you'll see as I'm moving it, it's changing my pivot point, which I don't want to do. So I gotta come over here, hinge joint, and make sure to move that anchor point again. So sometimes as you're moving things, you know, make sure, right? So you watch what happens if I don't move my anchor there. It's going to want to snap that back to where it was, which I don't want. So I want to make sure that they both are doing the right thing. Okay. Now, let's make this hinge joint more interesting. So let's disable this one. We're going to turn that one off. And let's build a proper mace swinging a ball oh death from scratch and let's see so in here there are also the components to make this swinging ball oh death uh, and you'll see it's got some chain links it has this circle it has uh, the mace on a on a chain and so on it has a square kind of good stuff all right so these have all been selected and already set to pixels per unit of 128 uh, which is the right size for them, so they're all good. You might have to set them from 100, whatever it is. And I'm going to drag one into the scene. I'm going to use this circle as being the the point where I want to uh, sort of anchor my um, my object. And here it is. And I'm going to bring it to the front. I'm going to say one. That makes sure that it is in fact in front of my tile here. So I'm going to hang it down like halfway. And that's going to become sort of my anchor here at circle two and we would call this uh we'll call this anchor and that doesn't currently have a rigid body on it uh so it's just gonna be in space you'll notice if you remember that one that weird uh mace that i had kind of that fell from the sky that put a rigid body immediately on this but we're not gonna do that we're gonna make it kind of a normal version so the first thing we're gonna do then after that the first after everything's a first I suppose is we're gonna bring this chain link in here all right so put the chain link in zoom in the chain link seemed awfully small I guess it's the right thing so there's the chain link and I'm gonna also bring it to the front okay so if it is in the front it's gonna be on top of this uh, circle here but to make things simpler, I'm going to start a hierarchy. So I'm going to use the anchor point. That's my 
main point of the hierarchy. And then each of the chain links in the ball of death itself are going to be children of that. Now, whether or not they're children of one another, you don't have to do that. So we're going to keep that simple. But it is important to have them all kind of grouped in a hierarchy so that uh, things make sense as you as you move along. And we can kind of uh, uh, make things nice and even. So this first chain link, we want to make sure that it's properly centered according to the parent. And we can make it centered directly in the uh, uh, the circle if we want. So it's going to start off. But maybe I decide it should be down there. All right. So it's slightly offset. We'll offset it by negative 0.5. In our case, it's, it's sort of an arbitrary number, but that's what we're going to do. All right, so there it is. Here's our first chain. Now, what we're going to need to do is we want to put a rigid body on that. Okay, or let's go ahead and put a hinge joint on it even. So it's a hinge joint 2D, creates our hinge joint 2D, creates a rigid body for it. Okay, now again, if I just hit this, it's just going to sit there in space and all is good. But I want to make it um, sort of do the right things here. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to edit this angular limit and use limits to turn that on. And I'm going to move this up to be at about the point where I would expect that to swing. Okay, so that's going to be zero. And the connected anchor currently is the anchor just in space. I'm going to turn that off, right? What I don't really want to have, well, no, it, sorry. In this case, I do want it to be the anchor in space, right? Connected anchor is just an anchor in space here. That's fine. So it's going to do the right thing for now, for now. And I'm going to set these limits to be negative 30 and 30. All right. So this, in theory, now this joint can swing. All right, let's see if I can hit it with my character, maybe. Well, I'm not gonna be able to hit it because it doesn't have a collider on it. So let's go ahead and put a capsule collider on it. Why a capsule? Well, because a capsule collider is going to fit that link just perfectly. All right. So that's very nice. Perfectly fits that. And now, oh, I shouldn't have done that. Well, mm -hmm. Add component, capsule collider 2D. Start again. Characters below it, move over a little bit. Hit it two straight on. All right. He just nudged it, and we got it swinging there. So cool. The first, uh, the first chain link is doing the right thing. So now what we need to do is sort of repeat the process. All right. So repeating the process, we're going to next take this next link, put that into the scene here, like so. And we're going to make the order layer one. All right, the order layer on that one was two. Now notice I'm doing that because I want this one to be behind that one, but in front of the other ones, this in front of the tiles, for example. So chain three, I'm going to go ahead and copy this into my anchored chain here. And it is just an image. Uh, I'm going to add some more components. I'm going to add another hinge joint 2D. And I'm going to add a capsule collider, again, 2D. If I look at the capsule collider, it is wonderfully put it around that chain link. And let's go in and say that we should edit the angular limits and things of that joint. So again, negative 30, 30. Uh, we're using those limits. And we want to reposition that swinging part right there, right? Zero. That to be zero. We can tighten all these things up. All right, makes perfect sense. Now, it starts to get interesting now, especially if we jump our character over here. You'll see something weird happened. All right, I knocked the joint, but they're not connected. They're not working together. You just have this joint and that joint. They don't work together. We want the joints to work together. So in order to do that, I'm going to say, OK, chain three, 
you are not an independent chain. You are not just doing your own thing. You are going to have a connected rigid body. So I'm going to click on chain 2 and drag chain 2 into the connected rigid body of chain 3. Now this may require a little bit of resetting here. You'll notice that this this got uh, thrown way off, this connected joint. So what we really wanted this to be is here, 0, 0. Right? Because we want this offset to be within our chain here. So now, not that we're using this connected rigid body, we come over and you'll see that one link is connected to the other link. So let's go a little further. Now we could just copy, copy and paste these two. Copy, paste, and we'll call this one chain four, and this one chain five. Now hopefully, if we select these two, we're going to move them down here. And if we select that, we'll see, OK, well, our point got off. But for the second one, it didn't. The second one, it moved correctly. The first one, it did not. Chain four, it did not move. Why? Because the one it copied from, which was chain two, does not yet have a connected rigid body. So we need to connect chain three's rigid body to chain four's connected rigid body. And we probably want to reset that x. And we're also going to be changing that y. So that's going to be at that appropriate point there. Right. So now if we click 2 is there, 3 is there, 4 is there, 5 is there. And now, bring our character, and you'll see they're starting to move correctly. Now that I've got a hierarchy going, <clears throat> if I get three, <clears throat> four, and five, and I copy those two and paste them, and we'll call this one six and seven. Let's double check and see, okay, what did six, where's that connected to? That's still connected to three, which is no good. So we want to take five and connect that to six and make sure that is set correctly. So five, six, seven. Whoops, well, I forgot to move six and seven. My bad. So six, Set that there. And it is set to 5, and 7 is set to 6. So the hierarchy is moving along. Okay. Almost to the point where we want it to be. So let's now grab 3, no, grab 4, 5, 6, and 7. And we're going to copy and paste those. And we'll go ahead and move that whole group down here. And click on that one, make sure, whoop, no, before we move it, I should always, okay, so this new one has to be connected to chain 7. So we're going to grab that, push that there, so 7, and then they're going to go through and all hopefully be doing, whoop, something happened wrong there. That's because I messed, that, messed up with that one. 6, 7, 4, yeah, see, I just move that. That needs to be right there. Five is right. Six, seven. All right. Whoops. <laughs> Managed to fall off. All right. So we have our chain being pretty realistic now. <clears throat> and last but not least, Let's add the mace, this actual swinging ball. What the heck? So bring that in here. Oh, I'm going to need at least one more link. So I'll copy that one. 
and put that one there. And so this should be, I should really switch all of these. So this should be eight. Nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. So, eleven, twelve. I want to make sure that twelve is connected to eleven, and then ultimately we're going to put mace chain on there. Mace chain needs also a hinge joint, 2D. It needs a circle collider, 2D. And what else? I think that's that should do it. So we'll say uh, edit the collider. That's good. The collider is pretty good. And let's edit the hinge joint. And we want the hinge joint to be negative 30, 30, just like the other ones. And this, the mace chain, is going to be connected to that. One above it, zero. So let's double check. 11, 12, and there it is. <laughs> Somehow I didn't uh, activate the limits. Bink. And it's going to unwind itself. There we go. Uh, let's fix that limits here. Use limits. And we also have to, whoops, edit angular joint limits. And let's put them where they should be. They should be right there, right? There, all right, uh, and yes, all right. So we have a swinging ball of death. It's not particularly swingy, but it is in the way there. Uh, one cool thing you can do, if you want, in the scene, we can do things like this. We could say, ah, okay, uh, we want to start it from a swinging position. So, because of the way things work, if I were to try to do this, if I were to say, okay, let me just move the mace chain. Let me try this. Uh, and I put it over here. Is that going to... No, that's no good. Uh, Z, Z. So a better thing to do is going to be to give it some sort of initial movement or, um, let's see, we could have built the chain in such a way, let's see, if I, I give this a motor, what happens? Not an awful lot of uh, force being used there. Motor speed, 100. <laughs> Not very good. And it's using it just in one direction, which isn't great either. Um, one other cool thing you can do, this is uh, probably good use of an effector here, or a, a fun use of an effector, is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to grab a effector. So I'm going to do effector, uh, excuse me, a create an empty, and we're going to put it right here. And we will add component effector, whoops, a 
point effector 2D. And we'll make the magnitude 100. And watch what happens with that uh, point effector right there. Nothing. Uh, oh, the effector will not. I need to have a add component uh, collider. We're just going to put a circle collider. And is trigger is used by effector. That's that'd be helpful. So I could start that off in the scene, and then disable it. You can see I can. It's one way of. Uh, enabling it. Or I can just have it sit there and wait for something to bump into it. Or I could even do things like have it, you know, start off in the scene, have it bump, have something bump into it, something do the right thing to kind of set it into motion. But in the real world, what would happen? Well, it would just be sitting there waiting. It w certainly wouldn't be kind of moving on its own. Um, I'm going to stop there, I guess. And that's been a whole half hour and we'll post this one and we can get some more specific things now obviously it has a collider so it could do all kinds of things like what happens when it collides and you can have a collider that reacts you know just at the end of the ball of death for example that might be you might have different types of colliders you know if the chain hits it doesn't really hurt the character. It just kind of sits there and moves him. So, okay. Hopefully you find that useful. That's kind of a fun compound joint uh, thing to try.